the job requirements uh, into practice, okay? So if you are uh, a financial analyst, and what they're looking for is someone who, say it's like a, a leadership position, and they want examples of when you've uh, led uh, fellow financial analysts uh, through specific projects, right? You want to talk a little bit about maybe about three different projects that you've actually led a team on, okay? Have three examples for every job requirement that's listed on the job posting. Have some questions for the employer. Have at least five questions prepared. I'm gonna give you two of them. I'm gonna give you two of the most important ones, okay? Question number one, you wanna ask this in an interview. You wanna ask them what is the biggest challenge right now for the, for the organization, okay? That's a question you wanna be asking in every interview. What is the biggest challenge that your organization is facing right now? And then take it a step further, right? What is the biggest challenge that the department that I'd be working in uh, is facing right now? And then, based on the answer, if you've solved a similar problem in your past work experience, this is the time to bring it up, okay? Another question you wanna ask, and you wanna ask this question at the end of the interview, do you have any concerns about hiring? Okay? Now, some people think that, isn't that a little aggressive? Can I really ask that question at the end of the interview? Right? Yeah, you can, and you need to ask it. You need to phrase it correctly. Okay? You can't ask, am I going to get the job? You can't ask, uh, when are you going to call me back? You can't ask, um, so, yeah, maybe I can get your number, and, your, and then, you know, can I, I mean, I'm free next week, maybe I can start. You don't want to do that. You want to say, do you have any concerns about hiring me? The reason why you want to ask this question is if there are concerns and you leave that interview, you're not going to get the job. But if you can address their concern, for example, if they say something like, you don't have enough experience, you can say, okay, I understand I don't have enough experience, but I'm a fast learner and I'm willing to work harder than everybody else here to get myself up to speed. Right? So, it shouldn't be an issue. Right? You want to be able to address that concern. Okay? Um, make sure you build rapport from the beginning of the interview. And the way to do that is talk a little bit about, you know, how's your day going? Or has it been a busy day? Talk a little bit about the office environment that you're working in. Talk a little bit about the weather outside. Thank the interviewer uh, for having the opportunity to have um, the interview. And if you're nervous, say so. Right? It's actually the best way to relieve your nerves by admitting, hey, I'm feeling a little nervous, but thank you for this interview. I'm really excited. Okay? Um, lastly, shortly, the way you answer behavioral based questions is a technique called CAR. Okay? So if you were asked a question like behavioral based question, give me an example of when you dealt with uh, an irate customer or a problem customer, right? First, you want to be able to put the question into context. Then you want to be able to describe the action that was made. And then you want to say the R. You want to communicate what the end result of the action that you did. So for example, if an interviewer asked me, describe a problem. Uh, describing a time when uh, you dealt with a problem customer. A good response would be, yeah, uh, I remember a time I dealt with this, this customer and Unfortunately, they, we gave them the, um, we were supposed to deliver uh, an order for them, which was an order of pens, right? But they gave us the incorrect address, so they never got it. And the customer called in and they were complaining and they were screaming and they were yelling, but I really utilized my communication skills, okay? And what I did was I suggested to the customer, hey, we can still mail out those items to you. But you know what would also be good? I, I know you expected them for Christmas. Um, we can mail them out to you at the beginning of the year. You can send them out as like the beginning of the new, new year items. And I also recommend that they take some calendars because they can brand the calendars. And that way, their client would be able to see like their company logo throughout the year. Um, the client 
listen to my suggestions, and he was actually real pleased, and it actually doubled the order for the year. So we, the client ordered calendars, and they ordered their old items, and it actually allowed us to uh, uh, make that client uh, one of the biggest sales and one of the biggest clients that we had for the year. Okay? So that's how you answer questions using the car statement. So this little uh, summary about the interviews, do your homework, make small chat at the beginning of the interview, and make sure you're utilizing the car technique. So that's it for my presentation. Okay? Now, thank you, thank you. We've got uh, some time left for questions and answers. I just want to bring your attention to if there's any, uh, if you had a question and it doesn't get addressed today, um, my contact information is on the screen. Feel free to write it down. Uh, my website is resumetoronto.ca, where we write professional resumes and we also provide uh, interview coaching services and career coaching services. Uh, my email address is ozzie dot songs. S is in Sam, A is in Apple, U is in Umbrella, and is in Nancy, D is in David, S is in Sam at resumetoronto.ca. And I can be reached at 416-642-6483. And I'll leave this on the screen as I'm answering questions. One question here. Is the cover letter always a must with the resume? Okay. That kind of depends. In, in some job postings, if they're asking for the cover letter, then it's a must. You've got to include it, right? If they're, if they're not asking for it, then it's not necessarily a requirement, right? But it, it's good to provide because it's your opportunity to really add a little spice, a little personality um, to the resume. It gives them an idea of what your actual writing skills truly are, okay? And also, once again, if you do know somebody that works for that organization, it gives you an opportunity to really mention their name, which will really increase your chances uh, of scoring an interview. I like, this, I like this question. If an interview is scheduled for 30 minutes, but um, after five minutes, <laughs> they uh, say that uh, it was uh, nice having you, but uh, it was nice having you, and we'll call you if you're interested. Is that a sign of... <laughs> is that a sign of non-acceptance? Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> if that happens, you should probably just keep on searching, right? Don't, don't sit by the phone waiting for a call. Okay, do you list, on a resume, do you list your professional experience in chronological order? Or do you list it in order of relevance to the one you're applying for? Okay, so here's the thing. Professional resumes, you want to take a look at the last 10 years of your work experience, okay? And you want to take a look at the last 10 years and you want to say, is my last 10 years of work experience related to the job that I'm applying for, okay? If it is, you're going to actually write for yourself a chronological resume, okay? Starting on top with the most recent employer that you've had for the last 10 years, and then you're going to work your way down. If your answer to that question is no, right, then you want to seriously start thinking about writing for yourself a skills-based resume, okay? Um, these are very effective for people that are, are changing uh, careers, okay? With the skills-based resume, what you want to do is you want to start off your resume talking a little bit about the skills that you've acquired over the last 10 years. Okay? We're talking about transferable skills, okay? And how these skills will allow you to actually successfully perform the job that you're applying for. And after you talk about those skills, you might talk just in bullet point form where you acquired those skills, starting with the most relevant position. Okay? Let me answer some more. Oh! Okay, um, the last line of your resume, um, does it make a difference if you say a references is available upon request, right? Um, you don't have to say references is available on request. 
Um, it's assumed, right? Um, if you're looking to fill space on your resume, you can put it, <laughs> right? But it's assumed. You don't. You don't need to do that. Oh, okay, good. Um, how much persistence can you show for a job when you don't hear back from an employer after the inter after the interview? Okay. So this is how you follow up with an employer after an interview, okay? Right after the interview, as soon as you get home, right after the interview, okay? You're gonna, sh first of all, make sure you get their business card so you can actually do this, okay? Because their business card will have their email address and their contact information on it. When you get home after the interview, send them a quick uh, message saying, thank you for the opportunity. I really do appreciate it and I'm really excited about the possibilities of joining your team. Keep it short, okay? Two days after the interview, formulate a thank you letter, okay? Make it short. All you're gonna do in the thank you letter is talk a little bit about the position you're applying for, why you're suitable for that position, and your skill sets, and then, if you really wanna make this thank you letter stand out, Remember one thing that happened in the interview, one thing that you actually learned, and talk a little bit about in the thank you letter. Just very briefly say, you know, I never knew this fact about your company, and it was really interesting learning about that in the interview, and I really appreciate the fact that you took the time to communicate that to me. Um, if you're interested in, in discussing more about how I can help your organization, this is where I can be reached. I look forward to hearing from you. And you send that thank you letter two days after you've had your interview. Okay? So that's kind of like your degree to how you can follow up with employers. That's it for questions. That's it. That's what I got. So thanks once again for having me. I hope um, you learned something about the job search and interviewing and resume. And I hope it was very informative. Once again, if you have any questions about your resume or if you have any questions about interview strategies, uh, my contact information is up on the screen. Um, feel free to contact me. Thank you. All right, we can do better than that. So appreciate all these songs. Thank you.